It's 1978, and Pamela Hensley is rocking every teenage boy's world with her knockout performance of Buck Rogers' sexy arch nemesis, Princess Ardala. See what I mean? As much as I loved it, though, I'll be the first to admit that Buck Rogers in the 25th century probably wasn't the greatest movie since Star Wars. But I really couldn't imagine that anyone could find anything at all negative to say about the wonderfully misguided and mischievous Princess Ardala, as played by Pamela Hensley. You see, much like Batman and Catwoman, Buck and the Princess have a strange attraction for each other and can't decide whether they should fight or fall into each other's arms. More often than not, the latter would occur, but then Buck would regain his senses and return to the waiting arms of Wilma Deering. Pamela Hensley had a few credits to her name, including Rollerball with James Caan, but it was this role that defined her. Strangely enough, she was not a series regular. Producer Glenn A. Larson realized that a little Ardala could go a long way. And go a long way she did. Much like the Marianne and Ginger debate from Gilligan's Island, Wilma and the Princess, well, they both have their fans. One has to think that if you are in the Ginger camp, you're likely in the Ardala camp as well. After that first season of Buck Rogers, I was pretty darn sure that just like Catwoman on the classic Batman 66 TV series, Ardala would be around to tempt good old Buck season after season. But then the second season was delayed due to a writer's strike, I believe. So the next thing that I actually saw Pamela Hensley in was this movie. Yep, a big screen adaptation of the classic TV series Get Smart called The Nude Bomb. It was a fun movie. Don Adams was great as usual. And for some unexplained reason, Barbara Feldon's Agent 99, well, she was just unaccounted for. But in her place were a bevy of other female agents, including Pamela as Agent 36. And when Buck Rogers finally did return for a second season, well, it was pretty much a completely different show and not a better one, if you ask me. I didn't mind Hawk but some of the other changes were just noggin scratchers. The show seemed to have lost its sense of fun. And guess what? Princess Ardala? Well, she was nowhere to be found. It turns out that Pamela Hensley had moved on to bigger and better things. From 1982 to 1985, she starred with Lee Horsley in the ABC television series, Matt Houston. In that show, Hensley starred as Houston's lawyer and sidekick, C.J. Parsons. It was a good role and it gave Pamela plenty of exposure. By the mid-80s, I was certain that she was going to be, wait for it, legendary. Speaking of legendary, you know I don't think Matt Houston, which was a really fun show, has ever gotten its due. And even though I'm aware that all three seasons were finally released on DVD a few years back, it kind of feels like it's become something of a forgotten show. I would absolutely love to see one of those retro networks pick that show up again and run it. Come on, MeTV. Do it just for me. So getting back to Pamela. Right around the same time that she signed on to Matt Houston, 1982, she married TV writer and producer E. Duke Vincent. It was her second marriage, and I have to believe that she committed to herself that she was going to do everything in her power to make it work. And somewhere along the way, during the course of those first few years of marriage, while she was still working on Matt Houston, Pamela made the decision, and I'm sure it was a difficult one, to retire from show business. And because of that, Matt Houston was Pamela's final entertainment project. Since then, she has neither appeared on television or in the movies. I know, I know, it's really a bummer, because this lady's career was just gaining momentum. It just seems a bit strange. But then again, maybe she just got tired of the rat race that is Hollywood and recognized that as women actors age, right or wrong, the roles kind of dry up, especially if your specialty is sexy lawyers and space princesses. Now that doesn't mean that Pamela has been completely out of the public eye. In 2004, she returned to the spotlight for a brief moment when she became a cookbook author. Her Jewish Sicilian cookbook fuses recipes from her childhood with her husband's Italian heritage. From what I understand, the recipes are pretty darn good, and one has to believe that Pamela has become something of a culinary whiz over the years. 
Her husband, Duke, has also become well-known in literature for his crime novels. He's actually become quite the prolific author. And although I haven't read any of his books, I've got to believe that Pamela has served as the inspiration for more than one character in his novels. While researching this video, I tried to find a social media presence for Pamela, but you know what? This lady has gone dark. She doesn't do Facebook, and she doesn't do Twitter. It appears that she simply has better things to do. So remember earlier when I said that Pamela was on the verge of becoming legendary? The more that I think about it, the more I realize to just give up her career, to really give it up, and go live what I have to believe is a better, more fulfilling, happier life. Well, maybe that is legendary after all. Okay, that's all I have. I think I'll end this video with one final picture from the greatest movie since Star Wars. I know, I know, but it was still a pretty decent flick. Where else will you find a character with a cool name like Tiger Man? Alright, please share your memories in the comments section of this video, and if you enjoyed my little trip down memory lane, please give it a thumbs up. That's how I will know if I should make more videos like this one. Also, I would be honored if you would consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.